This is the Sunseeker T3CX electric recumbent tadpole trike. And it's the end of the day here, kind of enjoying this nice sunset. I'm in Pennsylvania. I've been a little bit under the weather recently, um, but I couldn't resist coming and trying these bikes. Save the best for last, really. Uh, this is, is not the most affordable in their line at $22.85, but it's really not that expensive when you think about some of the specs. And that's because this is sort of a, it's like a partnership. It's a Sunseeker trike with a drive system from ebikekit.com, sold through electrictrike.com. Some of these brands and things, they're, they're part of electric bike technologies. Those are the guys who, who put this together. They assemble it, they ship it out. Um, it's $350 if you live in the contiguous US, like the lower 48 states, but it comes fully assembled right like ready to ride they like to say the key is in the ignition and they even try to fit it uh, for for your height and for your leg length and everything because this is adjustable it's got a boom that slides out like this and the seat which is like fully recumbent uh, is also a little bit adjustable back here you can see the different um, kind of the pins and stuff i think they've done a, a pretty good job all things considered mounting the controller box down here running the wires and stuff along the frame Yes, you know, they are not internally routed. This was not a purpose-built electric bike, but that's part of what makes it a lot more affordable than some of the competing offerings that are like $5,000 plus. Uh, so this one uses a 500-watt nominal, 1,000-watt peak, internally geared, rear-mounted hub. And it does produce a little bit more noise, but it's actually very zippy, very torquey, and uh, quite, quite a performer. <laughs> the bike actually goes like 26 to 28 mile per hour top speed. It's kind of a speed pedelec if you really open it up, um, but it does have pedal assist. It also has throttle operation, the throttle overrides assist. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, but it's kind of a, you know, it's at the top end of, of what's possible out there for, for electric bicycles. And um, the battery really supports that performance. It's a 48 volt, 10 amp hour pack using lithium ion cells, kind of the classic aluminum you know shell it does slide off the bike you unlock it and pull it back and there's a little charging port while we're talking about that i want to show you the the charger itself three amps that's a little faster a lot of these are just two amps and it's got that same metal shell so it's just really tough you know it's it does away a little bit more because of that some of the design features and because it's it's a fairly large capacity the 48 volts so this is about 9.3 pounds uh, the bike itself with all the electronics and everything is about 66 pounds so you know a lot of electric bicycles with just two wheels they weigh like 40 you know if they're the really really light stuff most of them are 50 and some of them are 55 or 60 so that you've got a three wheel recumbent trike here that's 66 i think that's that's pretty good and this thing is is really designed for speed if you look at the wheels here you got 14 gauge spokes but uh we've got stainless nipples and eyelets so they're not going to crack the frames the, the the rims are just really tight and and narrow kenda quest tires this is 20 by 2 point or 1.25 so you know 1.25 being a little bit narrower 100 psi max right there maybe it's like 75 to 100 psi that's just it's more like a road bike tire and you can see from the front here they you know there's a there's a little bit of um, angling going on for your steering and everything's just real low if you compare this to some of their other electric trikes where there's only one wheel in the front and the two wheels are in the back more like a tricycle like that that's their classic trike over there you know this is this feels more like you're on a roller coaster or something you're real low it means that getting on can be a little bit of a trick you usually sort of step over like this put a hand down and lower yourself in and you're just, you know, really, really low and aerodynamic. That's the beauty of um, recumbent bicycles in general. But when you get something like this, it's it's like a race car and you feel it. You know, there. that's one of the things there. This doesn't have suspension on it. So if you're going fast at those higher top speeds and you're hitting some, um, you know, potholes and cracks, you're going to feel it. But that's part of the fun. You know, if you get into a Porsche or something and you're riding high speed, it also feels like tight and, and um I don't know, I guess like rigid, there's that, that transfer of power and energy that you're not losing any of that through the tires or through the frame. We've got two disc brakes, 160 millimeter, 
up front here and, and it's sort of a it's a different brand here uh, it's like WinZip MM. I'm not super familiar. They're mechanical. You know, they work well enough. And then you got these whooshing levers here that are e-bike specific. So they have a motor inhibitor cable. Whenever you activate this, the motor won't go. Or if it's going, it'll stop immediately. And that's great because this uses a, a cadence sensing pedal assist setup. And it's got 12 magnets, which is kind of the most you can get. And I think it works pretty well up here. But you want to be careful when you're pedaling not to bump that. It's the kind of thing that could get a little bit out of tune if, if you, you know, you bump this piece here. But the flip side is it's easy enough to kind of realign it yourself, right? And even the disc is, it's sort of an aftermarket, like, clip-on design. So it's easy to work with. This whole thing is fairly modular. I'm a big fan of the screen. It's actually backlit. It swivels forward and back. But you'll see that it's, it's on this kind of, like, plastic mount thing here. It's designed to have a little bit of play like that. So if you bump it, it's not going to break. The display pivots forward and backwards and that's designed to like reduce glare depending on the time of day um, but it's big it's easy to see even when you're way back here it's like right there and then you operate it down here with this button pad and you know there is a little bit of it's like you know how do you how do you get to that you want to be careful with your your fingers too you know while you're riding because they are pretty close to the, the tire but that's just because this thing is tighter and I do have all the dimensions like the length and width and everything back at the site so you can determine like how, where am I going to put this thing? You know, will it fit through my door? <laughs> and if it won't, you keep it in the garage, you can still get that battery pack off and take that inside. And again, reduce the weight of the thing by like roughly 10 pounds, so down to like 55 pounds, and it's a lot easier to maneuver, stick in the back of your car or whatever at that point, and slide the boom in. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of cool. The other thing that differentiates this model from some of the others at uh, theelectrictrike.com, you know, combination um, manufacturer website there is is that it has more gears so we've got a SRAM X4 there's eight sprockets in the rear and then we've got three up front okay so that's that's great you know 24 speeds means that you're gonna be able to keep up with the bike at those higher at the higher speeds you're not gonna have to you know wear your legs out spinning super fast it'll be comfortable for you and the flip side of that is if you know you go out and you're pushing yourself and you run out of battery well you can get home a little bit easier hauling this thing around with some of those easier gears too and i just love that you know a lot of the, the tuning here the, the pipes for the chain kind of elevate it and the rollers right there and then uh the rack so some of the other bikes we've been looking at where it's the single wheel up front and the two in the back those don't have a rack and and that's a bit of a trade-off because if you're a commuter or something you know it's really nice to put your trunk bag up there maybe your panniers and put your laptop or whatever this this works really well and it's standard gauge tubing it's even got a bracket back here for maybe a license plate in some countries where they require it or a light and that's real important you can see the the reflectors are there and they're pretty visible but as it starts to get dark you, you want to make sure you're protecting yourself and just really yeah, being cognizant of that. And then back to performance, having those two disc brakes, one on each side, you can kind of whip this thing around and really have have a ball. And it, you know, it is pretty, it's pretty firm, more so than some of the other cheaper ones that that are a little bit lower speed and stuff. So this is a performance vehicle. I'm gonna hop back on one more time and talk about uh, that display panel. Again, keep in mind, it's a two-step process. You put in the key and you have to leave it in. We've taken off any keychain so it won't rattle. But even if you had a little thing, and you know, it's it's mostly out of the way. It's not like somewhere. It's right where you're pedaling. It's way back here. Click that to on. Locks it in. Then we come back here. After a while, the display kind of goes to sleep, like you see there. Press that M button. And boom, the display comes to life. At the top, we've got five ticks for battery level. I know it looks like there are more, but that's just a graphic. It's really like five increments 20 percent speed in miles per hour power level and i would say assist level but it actually limits how much power you use with the throttle too and then odometer and if i press the m button down on, on that ring again we change from odometer to trip one or trip a and average speed up top and trip b and max speed up top so you know this is pretty good readouts on this thing and if you want to get that backlight you just hold the up arrow. Let's see if we can see it right now. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. See how it's kind of green, greenish? It's getting a little darker. 
So that's nice. And then you can hold the up and the down buttons simultaneously and it'll enter the menus. And I'm actually here with an engineer from the company. Um, this is Alec, he's been helping me out all day. Hey Alec. Hey everybody. And it's, it's been great looking at this one. It's, I'm glad we saved it for the end because it's just a blast. It's yeah. super fast. Um, get, kind of seeing you <laughs> riding it on the way over here racing through and you're yeah. like, yeah, this thing handles. <laughs> it's really nice. And it pedals <laughs> well too. It's with, with the light geared motor mm -hmm. and you're, you're so aerodynamic that, that I, was, uh, I was pedaling along behind you for a while while you were using the motor and I was just pedaling at 15 miles an hour. And for me, that's fast. So yeah. that, that was fun. You start to feel that. You know, I've been a fan of the the traditional trike over there because you could haul all our gear and cameras around and yeah. i'm kind of like hey i want to turn on that one you know <laughs> get the high speed Absolutely. um another idea just for safety is you could put like one of those led tail whips or something yeah. like that there's a lot of even shields windshield kind of things like fairings on the yeah. front it's a lot you can do with this but even stock um i think it's dialed in pretty well can you remind me of of there are like three settings in there yeah. some people don't want to go super fast maybe yeah. they want the lightest one they want one that's nimble like this yeah. but they want they want to dial it down How, what do you do yeah th there's basically three things you can control um on the screen while you're riding you can control the power output which court already showed you you can turn that up and down from one to five and that controls the throttle and the pas you can also open up the menu and you can set a governor uh, a maximum speed limit so you can turn that down to like 20 miles an hour if you want and that'll shut off the motor when you reach that speed and it'll kick it back in. Key. For legal purposes in some places too, right, exactly. 20 is the max speed or in Europe 15.5, yep. 25 kilometers per yeah. hour. So it's great you can or, you have access to all that. Or if you're letting your teenagers ride it you might <laughs> want to turn it down just a little. Yeah. Um, so you can save that. You can also limit the current output so you can turn it down from 20 amps all the way down to 6 if you want or somewhere in yeah. between. And current is like that's like how much energy is being forced through so exactly. it's kind of the zippiness exactly yes yeah, so you can so that'll limit the maximum power so when people talk about you know like at a thousand watt system if you wanted it to be 500 peak you just turn down the current a little bit and that that'll limit the overall wattage that's wonderful another thing you can do is you can control the PAS sensitivity so yeah. you can turn it down so that, so that the PAS is less effective and then if so if you wanted more proportion on the throttle for instance yeah. you could turn down the PAS and use the throttle more or just turn that down so that it's less responsive to your pedaling. And for those who might not be familiar with the uh, that acronym I think that's like pedal assist yep. pass so sometimes you know you turn your crank just a little bit and it's like what what? And it's almost like, well, I just want it to chill out, you know? That's what he's saying. You can yeah. turn down the pedal assist sensitivity, but your trigger throttle is always there, and it's variable speed. So the, the harder you push it, the further you go, exactly. the faster the thing's going to go. And back to the, the pedal assist sensor down here. It does have 12 magnets, so yeah. you've got maximum responsiveness if you want it. Um, and it's not designed to be like a torque sensor. This isn't the kind of thing where you have to push hard. If you're just moving those legs, getting the blood flowing, having fun, that will still power the bike and then it's up to you to determine how much power one through five that's those levels there so exactly so this is great i i think um you know maybe i can if you can grab the the backpack real yeah. quick there i'll just you, know, you lift up the rear like this and kind of pivot it and you know we took it out on this dock for some fun shots and walk it forward okay i know we're losing light here I'm just gonna hop on this thing and zip and then we can maybe we can trade off yeah. I get that third person shot yeah Alec is a, he's quite the speed demon I like that they've got these decent Welgo pedals too they're cage style but they're a little bit larger and they've got good grip and I think they're lighter than some of the other ones so I'm gonna take it all the way up to level five. Oh, we had a tugboat go by a minute ago and you really got the water moving look at that wow cool Hopefully I'll be able to hear the motor. Oh yeah. This thing is a blast. Haven't even pedaled and I'm up to 20 plus, 24 miles per hour here. Oh boy. Got those disc brakes coming in handy gonna make a wide turn here it does actually steer pretty tight let's see there we go Whoa. there we go hitting some of these rocks here so you can hear it bouncing a little bit 
Maybe that rack in the back. Nice, and then there's the grip shifter. You might notice that the, the trigger shifter is kind of like right in the middle of the grip here. That's an option. They can put it kind of wherever you want, and a lot of times it's like if you can mount it a little bit lower, maybe below the grip shifter, it'll stay out of the way. And you know, it's it's kind of individual preference how you set this up, but it handles pretty well. You ready for your turn? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, oh boy. Okay, so he's, actually, why don't we just take it, you know, we can just kind of head head back that way and I'll, I, it's going to be hard for me to keep up, but go you can, the road. I'll kind of go around you and then you can zip off and cool. show the speed. Yeah, I'm hopping on this old, the trusty steed and uh, let's do it. There you go, gun it. Look at that thing. It's giving it a little bit of a turning. <laughs> oh, really packs a punch. <laughs> Having fun out here with the dogs. Uh, Wow. Well, uh, thank you. And thanks for being careful. You know, we're, we're trying to, you know, make sure we're, we're respectful of everyone out here, but you definitely showed some of the, the higher speed and just how zippy this thing is. I really appreciate it, Alec. And, yeah. um, I think that's about it. So, you know, if you want to get some more information about this, they've got the, the different websites that I mentioned earlier, I'll have all the specs and stuff, but that's the T3 CX from Sunseeker. You can find this thing at electrictrike.com. They're the ones who put it all together. But let's say you already have that frame, the Sunseeker frame. They do sell this kit. You can do it yourself. In the future, they're going to have batteries that are interchangeable and stuff. So it's it's pretty neat that way, um, especially as it gets to be dusk and you're at like a high-speed electric bike, a recumbent <laughs> that's low to the ground. Please be careful, you know, like, like we're doing here. We're doing the buddy system. We're going to get back before it gets too late. But We've had a blast. I really appreciate these guys having me out. And I welcome any feedback that you guys have, any suggestions on how to mount bags or other accessories like the tail whips or the wind fairings. And um, I'll see you next time. Cheers.